hi welcome to binary automation so in this tutorial we'll see how we can send a post request using the http client class so we'll basically using a method called send a sync this is the most common and the most generic method that everyone uses uh, since we can send any kind of http method right like your post put delete right and uh, along with that we'll also look at what are the different headers how we can pass headers and how we can uh, send headers in terms of the key value pairs and uh, get the headers in the response as well yeah so let's get started so i have a sample post request with me uh, so basically this is the request or this is the url that i have and uh, if you see the sample json payload it has id quantity price and if you see the response it's basically it's a very simple response success is equal to true and if you see the headers that we have the response headers we have date content type content length connection set cookies and uh, there are a lot more uh, headers there right so let's see how this can be done right So at first, I'll be writing a classic vanilla code within our uh, main function. I'll be writing the entire code, but uh, you know you can just take bits and bytes and put it in a method and parameterize it. But for simplicity, I'll just write this in the main method. Yeah. So first, I'll just initialize some of our uh, HTTP client class. And uh, we'll also be needing a HTTP request message. And HTTP response message. So all this comes under the same package, right? Uh, class system dot net dot HTTP dot HTTP client, right? So all are under the dot net. Now let's uh, let's also initial uh, let's also create a variable for a string called response body. Now let's begin by creating the object of the HTTP client class. Yeah. And uh, also create the object of the re HTTP request message. Basically, request is equal to new. HTTP request message. So if if if, you sh if I show you the documentation or the official documentation of the HTTP request message, uh, it basically requires two two values here, right? One is what what is the HTTP method you want to pass? Uh, basically, put, post, delete, and then what is the URI? Basically, what URI you are testing, right? The endpoint that you're trying to test. So uh, let me just give uh, the HTTP method as as post and the URI that I'm trying to test is let's get the URI we need to also have the request JSON request payload uh, sent along with the post message right so in order to do that uh, we have uh, we are creating a data model actually uh, so basically I have a class called data send and uh, within that uh, I've initialized three properties here ID quantity and price so if you look if you look at the uh, sample um, JSON right uh, it has ID quantity and price so that's exactly what I'm doing here so we need to uh, serialize our uh, data now right in order to set in order to uh, construct and send that within the as part of the sender sync right so let let me just uh, use the json convert okay and uh, json convert dot serialize so i have to import this uh, newtons of json right so basically this is the a new get package that i've added and basically you have to use that to serialize your data new uh, the class is data send yeah new data send right so basically your id uh you can give some value your id is 156 your quantity is one and your price is like 15 yeah 
when we have the data in insert in string formats we need to convert that into http content in order to send that with uh, as part of the send async method or the post async method right so uh, let's wrap it up now wrap it within the uh, string content word data string content equal to new string content So the data that I have to pass here is, yeah. But before that, I have to just put this, I have to initialize the string, uh, the one that was, that was just serialized, right? Uh, so let me just put this in the string content. And along with that, you can initialize your string content with certain ad additional values, right? Uh, for example, if you want the encoding here, right? And what kind of, uh, uh, whether, whether we are sending it in terms of XML or JSON, right? So let me just add this as the encoding will be encoding dot UTF-8. I mean, according to your projects, you can have the, d the relevant encoding, right? So encoding dot UTF-8 and I can pass like application slash JSON. Hope that makes sense now. Now, now since we have constructed our JSON payload, a request payload, now we need to just attach that to our uh, HTTP request message. Yeah. So the way you do is uh, HTTP. So basically, the request that you have just created here, request request dot content equal to string content. Yeah. So basically, you're, you're just passing that uh, string content to your request dot content, yeah. So now, let's start now uh, by adding the headers to this uh, request, right? Request content that we have. Let's try adding headers now. So now headers can be added in multiple fashions, right? So you can you can use, for example, the HTTP client like for example we have the client dot default request headers and you can you can just do an add here right you can add this in terms of the key value pairs that's that's one of the option that you have uh, that's, that's a, there are a couple of other options but what I prefer like some of the people who work in the industry they prefer is they kind of uh, use the headers or add the headers rather in a, uh, in a class which is in build called name value header value class, right? So what it does is that you can add the headers in terms of keys and values, and when and you can even run a for each on on top of that, right? So let's see how it how it can be done, right? You can even you can even actually um, have a dictionary initialized and add that, and then later add that to the request dot headers. So so let me just show you how it can be done. So I have a list uh, with name value header value, right? So if you see this name value or header value, so that's what exactly that's exactly what I'm going to use. Okay, so this uh, name value header value comes within the system dot net header HTTP headers uh, name value header value. So if I if you if I show you the the official documentation for this, right? Uh, basically represents a name value pair used in the various headers, right? So if you see the two properties that we get. Uh, for this name and value right so you can just uh, retrieve it by saying you know the the name value dot like name and the value so you will get the those relevant details so let's see how we can add certain uh, headers right so if for example let's rename let's rename this as list headers yeah for simplicity and we'll have um, so let's add this list headers yeah whatever list headers dot add okay we get an add method here so if you see you we can we can actually create this object of the na new name value and we can pass the headers here so say the content uh, is like uh, encoding UTF-8 and similarly you can, can pass multiple uh, such values right 
let me just add uh, another value here as like user agent and pass it in machine name or something like x machine okay yeah and uh, so now let's see how we can actually add this to our actual uh, request dot headers right so that is basically what we want right so i have a let me just write a for each okay and uh, so let me just pass this list headers here and give this as header so basically within our uh, request request dot headers dot add okay so if you see this request dot headers dot add right so you'll be able to add uh, the headers in terms of your key value right so the header dot value header dot name and header dot value basically what we're doing is we are just looping this uh, the list here and then just adding this in terms of adding this uh, in in terms of header dot name and header dot value so your request dot headers is now initialized with your headers right so that that's really cool right we have the headers and now we have the content right your request content now if you want to send this as part of the send async it's so all you have to do is Client dot send a sync, and what you can do is you can send the request here. And this will actually give you a response. So let me just show you the what the send async requires, right? Send async requires an HTTP request HTTP request message. So that's what exactly what we are sending. And the error that you're seeing now is because we have to wrap this with the with the await and async model, right? So since we are writing an asynchronous way, uh, we need to have we need to wrap this in the uh, await and async method, right? So I've already added the async here and the task, right? So let's let's just uh, proceed ahead, right? So now we've got the response. Now let's have this response body in uh, added as a string, right? So await response dot content dot read a string, right? So what so what this does is it will give you uh, it'll just uh, give back the whole thing in in the string, right? And then you can you can do whatever you want with the string, right? You can for example now let's just now let's just print this uh, okay now once we send this let's let's do another thing the the additional part that we want to do right we'll also see how we can uh, get the headers from the uh, from the response and uh, how the headers are going to be right but before that uh, let's just run it once and see how the whole uh, response looks like yeah Okay, great, right? We've got success as true, and that is exactly what we wanted, right? So uh, let's just r uh, run this uh, in terms of how we can uh, get the headers in, in the response as well. Yeah. So we'll be writing a for each loop now. Okay. For each uh, war item, say in response dot response dot headers. Yeah. So it's exactly very similar to what we have done earlier, right? So basically, when we wanted to add something, we uh, we we added that in the in the request dot headers. So if you see this request dot headers, we just added that, and and the same thing applies to your response message. So if you want to retrieve what what are the headers and you want to assert something, you can just do a response dot headers and just retrieve the the values, right? So so now, for example, I want to display or I want to print the values. What I can do is right line. Um, I can say that uh, key is okay. Uh, item dot key, right? And uh, let me just append this and and add the remaining part of 
you know what the value would be right the value is item dot value now I'll just show this part here why are we using this first or default or thing right right so if, if you see this carefully what this response dot headers return right now response dot header basically gets the collection of the HTTP response headers okay now what what does it actually return the HTTP response headers right so so let me just show you this now what kind of error it will throw see this cannot cannot convert type system collections generic key value pair in terms of string so here your string is nothing but your header name okay and the value is in terms of I I enumerable string right so basically uh, you will have a string it's kind of a string wh wherein you can loop through the string right you can have like string separated uh, it's like a string you can have string arrays or uh, you can you can actually enumerate on, on top of that right so uh, let's just uh, put this back as where well, item and uh, that's the reason we, we are we are doing this right so if you see the item dot value what it returns it returns i i enumerable string and from there uh, you know the, the so if you see this first or default there's an extension method on the string part and uh, it returns the first element of the sequence or default or default wall value if the sequence contains no element so we have a similar method which is called the first but the problem with the first is that uh, in case if it is uh, like if it's case if it is null or blank, uh, it it can throw exceptions as well, right? So that's the reason we are using the uh, first or default. Great. So let me just uh, run this for you. Yeah. Right. Great. So see if you see this key is date date or uh, let me just uh, add proper spaces here so it'll be easier to understand okay and run it again so if you see the key key is date value and that throws actual value um, the key is uh, blah and blah connect value keep alive access control allow origin value is just a star um, the key is CF's um, cache status value uh, and the value is dynamic so you get all the response right so now you can take this individual keys or individual values and and you want to do it or you want to save it similarly you know you can you can even have the authorization for example you've got certain um, tokenization in the headers headers and you want to validate that right so you can maybe a better token or some other token and you want to see how it works right so this exactly works exactly works like that right so even even in the in the top one that we saw right where we were in we were trying to add the headers request headers uh, you can actually loop through the headers in this in the similar fashion that we have done below right so all you need to do is uh, over here in terms of uh, response dot headers you'll just do request dot headers and you'll just print it so let me just do that for you as well if you want to print what was the uh, request headers right so request I'll just say request dot headers and I'll print this as well for you right so let me just run this okay if you see the last two uh, keys encoding values utf8 and user agent is x machine right so this is how you can just traverse through your headers your response headers and your request headers so hope you like the video uh, please um, comment on what further needs to be uh, you know talked about or, or, or made a video on and uh, please comment likes and please share the video across so that you know I can gain more um, uh, visibility yeah thanks a lot